We're ready for our second of two semifinal matches here in the King of the Death Matches tournament. One of these two men will go on to the finals to face Terry Funk. It's Shoji Nakamaki versus Cactus Jack. Yeah, Cactus Jack taking on the smartest man in the tournament, Nakamaki, who still has his arm and elbow taped up to try to protect himself from the carnage we're going to see. This match is a bed of nails death match. And, you know, you could literally die in this match if you're not careful. There's a bed of nails that could go straight through you. Well, you know, they call them death matches, but I don't think necessarily because you want to see your opponent die or you yourself want to be a fatality in the wrestling ring. Uh, it's more of a death-defying type of thing that despite the fact that nails and broken glass and barbed wire and explosives are put to use during the course of the matches in this tournament, you still are able to walk away alive. It's death-defying wrestling that only guys that are as tough as a Cactus Jack or a Shoji Nakamaki can withstand and continue to compete in throughout their career. But there's no guarantee, Dave, that either of these men will either of these men will walk away from this matchup. Bed of nails. Once they put the bed of nails to use, anything is possible. Without a doubt, and we still have barbed wire around the ringside area as well that can be put to use. As Cactus Jack with the baseball slide drop kick, face first into the barbed wire goes Nakamaki. I don't even know if Cactus Jack was aware oh, as, as we see the bed of nails now. Oh, wow. I don't know if he was aware that the, the bar wire was even there. He was just trying to drop kick Nakamaki out of the ring and Nakamaki happened to fall face first into the barbed wire. And now he's got that barbed wire board reversal of the whip and Cactus Jack back first into the barbed wire but comes charging right out and knocks Nakamaki off his feet. Cactus Jack goes into the barbed wire, but it only served to fire him up as he exploded out and hit that clothesline, knocking Nakamaki down on the floor. And it looks like we're going to see the bed of nails be put to use. It's Cactus Jack bringing it inside the ring. And you look at those, those nails, Dave, they look to be three or four inches tall. Blocking the suplex attempt, and Nakamaki suplexes Cactus Jack on the floor. And a headbutt from this position. Both men on their hands and knees. Two headbutts from Nakamaki. And Cactus just throws the barbed wire board at the shoulder of Nakamaki, sending him down, and the barbed wire just stuck into his back. And, the, and you saw Nakamaki tried to turn away, but the top of the barbed wire Caught Nakamaki in the eye, and I think that eye may be cut now as Cactus Jack digs away at the head of Nakamaki with the barbed wire. Cactus rolls back inside the ring. That bed of nails inside the ring. Nakamaki back to his feet on the floor. As Cactus with the bed of nails propped up in the corner. Nakamaki now. Cactus Jack just driving the head of Nakamaki and raking it across the heads of those nails. But Nakamaki able to push push Cactus Jack into the bed of nails, and Cactus Jack goes oh. arm first into the nails. The arm just driven right into the nails, and now back first into the nails as well. And you see the lacerations on the arm of Cactus Jack after being sent into the bed of nails. As if the bed of nails is not enough, now Nakamaki is bringing in the barbed wire board. Yeah, if you want to slide the barbed wire board into the ring, you might want to not have the barbed wire down on the canvas, but nobody said that these guys were geniuses. Well, maybe Nakamaki wanted to cut up the ring mat. That could be a case of him being a big moron, but yeah, anyway. Choking away now, tearing away at the face, the blood pouring into the eyes of Nakamaki. Got the barbed wire board placed across the back of Nakamaki. And this is wise for Cactus Jack as he gets a running start. And he drives down with all of his body weight, protecting himself with the other side of the board while the barbed wire is digging into the flesh of Nakamaki and his back. And the barbed wire now. Cover. Oh, only two. Gets his shoulder up. Cactus Jack trying to contemplate his next move here. Starts to pick up the barbed wire board. Is he gonna suplex it on to Nakamaki? 
suplexes the board, just dropping the barbed wire right on top of Nakamaki, as well as all the weight of that board. And now Cactus Jack pushes the side, the barbed wire board. Could be setting up Nakamaki. No, instead opts to bring him to the outside. Nakamaki trying to hold on for dear life. Look at the blood pouring out of the arm of Cactus Jack. Courtesy of that bed of nails. And now Nakamaki sent right on top of the nails. Really feeling the effects. Cactus Jack back out to the floor himself. Cactus Jack picking up the bed of nails. Nakamaki in a bad spot here. What could have Cactus have in mind? Cactus picking up Nakamaki. He set up the bed of nails. He's gonna try to slam him on the bed of nails. Nakamaki able to block the attempt though. Cactus now with the bed of nails. And just dropping it on top of the body of Nakamaki. Underneath all of the weight of that board and the nails on top of him. Cactus Jack with the elbow off the apron. driving the nails into the flesh of Nakamaki. And look at that maniacal smile on the face of Cactus. Well, Cactus Jack is definitely not all there, Dave. And he just jumped off the apron with an elbow drop into the bed of nails. And Nakamaki must be punctured now all over his body. Cover! He kicked out! How did he kick out? Cactus had so much momentum, so much height, and force driving those nails into the body of Nakamaki, but he's still fighting. And Dave Nakamaki proving to be an absolute warrior as he battles back with the headbutts and stumbles Cactus Jack into the other board of nails. And just throwing Cactus repeatedly into the bed of nails and out of the barbed wire. Look at it just tearing into the arm of Cactus Jack. Took a risk right there to Nakamaki. It did not pay off. Nakamaki went for a splash, but Cactus moved out of the way. And Nakamaki went stomach first into the barbed wire board. And the barbed wire board actually gets caught on the ankle of Cactus Jack as Cactus tries to send Nakamaki into the corner. Cactus in control. Good for possibly a suplex. Nakamaki trying to use his leverage to block. Again, able to block the attempt at the suplex. But finally, Cactus able to take him over with the suplex. And the legs of Nakamaki sent into the barbed wire, allowing Cactus the time he needs to head to the second rope. Elbow drop connects right to the face of Nakamaki. Goes for the cover. Nakamaki still staying in this match. And the fans here at Kawasaki Stadium absolutely stunned by the heart of Nakamaki as he kicks out time and time again. Cactus with yet another elbow drop. Hooks the leg. Not able to put him away. But you can see Nakamaki so close to being finished off here. It may only take one more major blow from Cactus Jack to put him away. Nakamaki trying to pull himself up, almost lifeless here. And just driving his own head into the turnbuckle and a headbutt for Cactus. Another headbutt from Nakamaki. And again. Series of headbutts. Got Cactus Jack, DDT! And the barbed wire clinging in onto the body of Cactus Jack, but he kicks out. And Cactus Jack trying to make his way back to his feet here. Can he do so before Nakamaki? Cactus was dropped on his head with that DDT, but Nakamaki's taking so much punishment, double arm DDT in the barbed wire! That's gotta be it, cover! And your finals of the King of the Death Matches tournament is set. It will be Terry Funk versus Cactus Jack.
that too? How much more do you want from me? This is my night, not yours. It's not your night, so you get that camera out of my face, but not before I say the next time Terry Funk we separate the men from the boy. No, no, we don't. We separate the men from the old bastards. So you take a look at a real man, Terry Funk. And when I'm through with you, I'll take a look at a real dead man. ゴロは、そのまま止まるの、この半年で。俺はもうまあまあ、Yamamoto, who uh, spoke to the promoter, and he wants me to come back once more to Japan. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Mr. Kimoni friend, the, which I love like my son. I appreciate you very much. I appreciate you, wrestling fans, that I love you, and I love Japan. Thank you very much. <laughs> The Headhunters to take on El Texano and Silver King. 
in tag team competition. Yeah, and Dave Silver King and El Texano are defending their IWA World Tag Team Championship against the massive headhunters. Uh, what's Texano even thinking, trying to body slam the headhunters? Two massive individuals. Headbutts now on the apron here. And down he goes, goes for the cover right away. Only gets two. Silver King stuck in the middle of the two massive headhunters. Identical twins and fearsome individuals to say the least. And Dave, they don't even have names. They're just they're just the headhunters. <laughs> you can call them A and B if you want, but they look exactly alike, and they both drive down with simultaneous headbutts. Silver King was just the victim of an A B sandwich. And El Texano's got to find a way to help his partner here, or their championship is going to be in serious jeopardy. Silver King crawls to the corner, makes the tag. Texano in. Shot to the midsection and forearm strikes now to the jaw of one of the headhunters. Comes charging with the clothesline, but only rocks the big man. Overhand chop, conventional chop. But one clothesline from the headhunter takes him down. There's only so much you can do to try to take a man as large as the headhunters off of his feet. Big flapjack. Drop chest first down to the mat. And a splash leg drop combination. El Texano could be out. The leg drop right to the back of the head. Cover. But Silver King in to make the save. Silver King and Texano now. Trying to double team the headhunter. Just driving down with all of his body weight on the lower back. Out to the floor he goes. Silver King using his quickness there. Here comes Texano. Takes him down with the dive. And Silver King soars as well. Springboard cross body to the outside. Knocks down the headhunter. And for big dudes, they certainly can fly. Dave Prezak, you've got to be kidding me. The headhunter. Somersault plancha to the outside. Absolutely unbelievable. Double team work right here from Silver King and Texano. Running clothesline in the corner. Now all the way up top. Silver King with the missile drop kick to the back right into the clothesline from Texano. Cover. And if you're Silver King and Texano, that's what you gotta do to defeat the headhunters. You gotta double team them, take them apart one at a time. And right now, the Yudahishi Juji Aku Juji Gatami applied. Will the headhunter tap out? He's trying to snap his arm. Not giving it up. Referee asking if he's had enough. Just really wrenching down on that arm. A lot of pressure put on the shoulder right here. Releases the hold, decides to change it up a little bit. Again, trying to go for the body slam. Not a wise move. And the head owner able to power out. Sends Texano off the ropes. Sunset, flip. Again, not a wise move. Went to sit down on Texano. But he moved out of harm's way, hooked that leg tight, but couldn't keep him down. In comes Silver King. Besides, uh, double team work would be a better idea than trying to do it by himself, but look at the strength of the headhunter able to suplex both of his opponents all by himself. Silverting and Texano have got to be besides themselves here. They tried to do a double team suplex, and one man took both of them over, but they try again and they get it. Persistence pays off for Silver King and El Texano. The headhunter laid out on his back. Silver King and Texano both to the top rope. But they only get two. Looking to follow up now. Going for the headbutt. But he's got such a hard head, they did more damage to themselves than to their opponent. Big body slam 
from the headhunter. Body slamming both of Los Cowboys. And Los right. Cowboys are in trouble here. Big splash. And keep your eye on the other headhunter. Moon salts. Nobody home. Silver King able to get out of harm's way. Again, such great agility for men the size of the headhunters to be able to do backflips off the top rope. Sent across the ring into the buckle, but moves out of the way. The headhunter collides with the turnbuckle. And now Texano, visibly frustrated, just can't think of anything he can do to put away one of the headhunters. Silver King sent over the barricade and into the front row as Texano biting away on the head of the other headhunter inside the ring. But Texano's in trouble as Silver King is still in the crowd and both headhunters on the prowl here. It leaves both of the headhunters double team headbutt. And now he is just at the mercy of the headhunters is Texano is Silver King trying to crawl back toward the ring. Trying to get his balance up on the second rope. These headhunters are massive. Double team strategy here from the headhunters. Sit out, powerbomb off the ropes, cover. And too little, too late as Silver King dove in to try to break up the pin attempt. We have new tag team champions in IWA Japan in the Headhunter. Here's the opening bell, Dan the Beast Severn, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion to put the title on the line against Tarzan Goto. And it's starting off as just a fight, a slap across the face, and out to the floor goes Goto. Dan Severn, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, almost immediately attacking the referee. Very uncharacteristic for Dan Severn. And Goto's got a chair. As uh, Dan Severn knows, Goto, a deathmatch-style wrestler these days, uh, will grab an object, put it to use, uh, much like the deathmatch wrestlers we are seeing in the tournament here this evening. And Dan Severn, known for just being a straight-up fighter, not necessarily using weapons, he just, he fights with his hands. And Tarzan Goto now, trying to choke out Dan Severn with this sleeper. Just tosses Goto overhead and out to the floor he goes. And Dan Severn, we heard his comments earlier tonight. He realizes that Tarzan Goto is gonna be looking to fight both inside and outside of the ring. And Dan Severn is fully prepared to do the same. Dan Severn won the NWA world title from Chris Candido. At an event in Erlanger, Kentucky, taking that title around the world and defending it against the best wrestlers from around the, around the world. And Tarzan Goto looking to make history here in Kawasaki Stadium as the NWA world title on the line. And not only is Dan Severn the heavyweight champion of the world in professional wrestling, he recently won a mixed martial arts competition at the fifth UFC Ultimate Fighting Championship tournament. And you saw that prize carried to the ring by Dan Severn along with the NWA world title as he goes after the leg of Tarzan Goto. Trying to strike Dan Severn to force him to release the hold as he really wrenches up on that leg. Goto kicking Severn in the chest. Jockeying for position, who's gonna be able to maintain a hold here? as Goto comes up with a half-crab. 
And Goto may pose the largest threat to Dan Severn's reign as NWA heavyweight champion of the world as he's taken the fight to Severn and has knocked Severn to the floor. There's some vicious stomps from Tarzan Goto and the world champion feeling the effects. Goto just waiting for Dan Severn to get back inside the ring, trying to shake off the effects. But Severin back in. Big clothesline. Down he goes. You got to be impressed with Tarzan Goto. Dan Severin, one of the toughest men in the world today. And he's at the mercy at this point of Tarzan Goto. It's been approximately five years since a man of Japanese descent has held the NWA Heavyweight Championship of the world. And Dan Severn, you gotta think, is gonna do everything in his power to try to bring this title back to the United States. But Tarzan Goto certainly has the home field advantage here in Kawasaki Stadium. Going after the arm of Dan Severn, he rolls forward though, to leave the pressure. Severn with the hands locked to prevent extension on this hold here. And trying to use his leverage to force the shoulders against the canvas. Knee strikes now from Dan Severn, repeatedly to the side of the head of Tarzan Goto. Clubbing down across the back of the head and the neck. He's looking to choke him out. Rear naked choke here from Dan Severn. This could be it. We've seen him beat many opponents with this in both pro wrestling and mixed martial arts. Tarzan Goto could be out. And the fans here at Kawasaki Stadium are stunned. Tarzan Goto could be out here. The referee checking on his condition. Severn will not release the hold. Finally rolling all the way to the floor. Goto able to escape the clutches of Dan Severn. Goto almost out of just desperation. Rolled out of the ring. It was his only way to escape the rear naked choke. And he just broke a bottle on the ring post. Well, so much for going strike for strike with Dan Severn. Just as Severn expected out of Goto, he's going to put weapons to use, and Severn trying to block that broken bottle with the chair. Headlock takeover over the guardrail as we see Tarzan Goto kind of mix together amateur skills with his deathmatch style as well. And they're in the crowd going at it. Oh, this is turned into a straight up fight. Full mount from Tarzan Goto. Dan Severn tries to flip over as they fight in the chairs. And now half guard from Tarzan Goto as he chokes away at the throat of Dan Severn. Chair in hand, just swinging down and repeatedly Beating against the body of Dan Severn with the chair. Tarzan Goto just laying him out. Another chair just launches it at the fallen Dan Severn. Dan Severn has defended the heavyweight championship of the world of professional wrestling all over the world in numerous promotions. And the top fighters in every fighting art have come to the United States to meet and the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and Dan Severn defeated them all. But has Dan Severn ever faced someone as crazy as Tarzan Goto? Has he ever faced someone as dangerous as Tarzan Goto as he continues to throw chairs on Dan Severn? Well, Severn still down underneath a pile of chairs. Goto, blood may be pouring down his face, but he's inside the ring and just waiting for the world champion to get back in the ring. Severn's got chairs in hand, and he's just launching them at the ring, trying to hit Tarzan Goto. And it's almost as if the violence of Tarzan Goto, all the punishment he inflicted, has unleashed the beast in Dan Severn. Just whipping chair after chair. Look at how far he's launching those chairs into the ring. The seat's throwing him like frisbees. Tarzan Goto standing inside the ring with one chair in hand. Severn still whipping chairs from the floor. Well, thank goodness the ring has ropes, Dave, as most of the chairs have been deflected back down to the outside. 
but that has not deterred Dan Severn. He is absolutely relentless with his chair throwing. Arzan Goto takes a sw swing with that chair. Severn moved out of harm's way. Asking the referee to back him up. As everyone around ringside very cautious and concerned, including Phyllis Lee. Swinging away, oh, but he goes after the knee of Tarzan Goto with the chair. And both men swinging chairs at the same time. Dueling chair swings. And Severn with the suplex. Belly to belly from Dan Severn. He's got Goto down. Pulls down the knee pad, going for the knee drop. Nobody home. Tarzan Goto able to make it back to the outside of the ring. Pulling on the leg of Dan Severn, trying to bring him to the outside as well. And then now, just a big right hand to the forehead. And using that chair on the knee of Dan Severn now. Swinging away at the arm as well. Jabbing the chair into the arm. The referee trying to ask Goto to put the chair down. But he's going to use whatever he can get his hands on here. Severn struggling to get back up. Repeated chair shots to the back of Dan Severn. But he's back up and tried to block that chair shot, but it just took him down. You just saw the eyes of Severn rolling to the back of his head. And Tarzan Goto needs to try to attempt a pin. He's picking up Severn once again, but you gotta pin the man to beat him. Big clothesline sends him down. We can have a new world champion right here. Cover. Severn kicks out. Headbutt from Tarzan Goto. We see a pile driver. Dropping him down chest first. What a pancake by Goto. Only two. Tarzan Goto headbutt for Severn once again. You see another pile driver. Now he drops him down once again, chest first. That's the second pancake by Goto. Only able to get one? Again, Dan Severn kicking out. Gotta hand it to Severn. Even through the use of weapons and everything, he's continuing to kick out. High impact maneuver from the Beast. Buys him a little bit of time to try to shake off the effects. Both men trying to get back up. Severn ducks the attempt. German suplex. What a throw by Dan Severn. And now he's got rear position, rolls him over. Could he go for the rear naked choke again? I think he's got it locked in, Dave. There it is, Goro trying to fight it. This could be it right here. Referee checking on the condition of Tarzan Goto. He looks out. Severn still with the hold cinched in. Referee checking on Goto's condition. If he has any life left in him. And Dan Severn stands victorious.
I knew in just stepping in the ring, this was going to be a test of great skill out there. Tarzan Go was a great uh, warrior. He will use all means to claim victory, whether it be inside the ring or outside the ring. Early on in the match, he tried to bring me outside the ring. I wanted to keep the action inside because I knew once we did step outside, he would be looking for an object. More primarily a chair. I never expected him to bring a box back to me. So I had to actually, I was fighting, not, not only was I fighting for an NWA title, I literally was fighting for my life out there. The finals of the King of the Death Matches tournament has arrived. It's Terry Funk versus Cactus Jack with a whole lot of stipulations to this one. The ring ropes have been replaced with barbed wire. We've got barbed wire covered boards with explosives added as a wrestler is sent on top of those barbed wire boards inside of the ring. They will explode, plus we have those well, bombs, for lack of a better term, on the floor around the ring that are set to go off after a certain amount of time has expired during the course of this matchup. A whole lot of toys for these two men to utilize against their opponent in this match. And Dave, who would have thought that two Americans would go to the finals here in Japan at Kawasaki Stadium? to crown the king of the death matches. Cactus Jack, Terry Funk, the finals are contested with no ropes. It's an explosive barbed wire fireboard time bomb death match. And say that 10 times fast if you can. Time bomb death match. And this is not the first time that Terry Funk has competed in such a match where after time has expired, the uh, outside of the ring area basically explodes. Yeah, very dangerous matchup, Dave, as literally the guys can be blown to smithereens. If the, explos if the explosion is uh, large enough and if they're in a dangerous enough position close to the edge of the ring to feel the full ex effect of the explosion, it could be a bad situation for these wrestlers as Cactus Jack rolls underneath the barbed wire and back inside the ring. And we've got one of those barbed wire covered boards in the center of the ring. And Dave, these are two professionals. These are the two best deathmatch wrestlers in the entire world. And let's hope for their sake that when the bombs go off, they're able to get out of the way. And just driving the forehead of Terry Funk into the barbed wire, tearing away at the flesh. He tried to have his head bandaged up as much as possible from his first two matches today as part of this tournament. Both of these men have lacerations all over their bodies, their heads, their backs, their arms, you name it. They've probably got cut during the course of their first two matches. Cactus Jack has Terry Funk hooked. He could be looking to suplex him into the barbed wire, but Terry Funk counters, and the flesh of Cactus Jack meets the barbed wire for the first time in this matchup. And Terry Funk has the advantage here, but both men still in the danger zone. There's barbed wire everywhere, and they better be careful for those barbed wire boards, because if you land on one of those, it's gonna explode. Terry Funk struggling to stay on his feet. 
as Cactus Jack continues to fire away. He's got him rocked. And there's the first explosion. Look at the fire. Terry Funk blew up. Terry Could be it right here. He's, he's going for he's the cover. It's gotta be it. He landed on the no, he, he kicked out. He landed on the barbed wire board. He was right in the middle of it while it exploded. We saw his back on fire, and somehow, some way, Dave, he kicked out. Once again, Cactus Jack trying to utilize the barbed wire just to rake it across the flesh of Terry Funk. And as Cactus came charging, Funk out of the corner of his eye, saw it and moved out of the way, and Cactus meant nothing but the barbed wire. And Cactus put his own body on the line, going for that elbow drop, and when Terry Fung moved out of the way, Cactus Jack landed arm first in the barbed wire, and that arm is now lacerated. Oh, Terry Funk butterflying the arms of Cactus Jack. Butterfly suplex. And Cactus Jack able to twist his body in midair to avoid the board, but he can't avoid the barbed wire. The arm first he goes, and we saw there it stuck right into the skin. He's still stuck to the barbed wire. And it does neither of these men much good. The fact that they've got long hair in a barbed wire matchup, all it takes is their hair to get tangled into the barbed wire, and you've got nowhere to go. Well, it's, either, it's either pull your hair out of your head or, get, or stay stuck in the barbed wire for your opponent to unleash more punishment. Well, Terry Funk was at least smart enough to tie up the hair in the back of his head as he goes for another feel, and there he goes, Cactus Jack has now suffered one of the exploding boards. And you can still see some of the fire from the explosion on the board amidst the barbed wire. You can see the arm of Cactus Jack heavily taped up trying to uh, keep those lacerations from earlier in the tournament from being busted open once again. Pile driver by Terry Funk. And you gotta wonder, Terry Funk uh, getting a little thin on top. Maybe some of these barbed wire matches he's been in in the back has just pulled his hair out. Could be, as Terry Funk now with one of the barbed wire boards propped up against the barbed wire ropes, another pile driver snaps the board in half and does even more damage to Cactus Jack. And look at the arm of Cactus Jack as well, lacerated on the underneath portion of his arm. And Terry Funk picking up Cactus Jack you see blood everywhere, lacerations everywhere. The clothing of these competitors starting to rip apart. Oh, what a left hand. Knocks down Cactus Funk into the barbed wire. Cactus is down from a Terry Funk left cross. Oh, and his hair is stuck in the barbed wire. And look at that, his hair on the barbed wire. He had to just pull it right out of his head in order to break free. Terry Funk pulls Cactus into the center of the ring. He has him head first and sends him into the barbed wire board. The body and face of Cactus Jack goes crashing into the barbed wire once again. Funk with the cover, but Cactus Jack kicks out. And the referee certainly in a lot of danger in a matchup like this too. He could accidentally end up in the barbed wire. He could accidentally get caught up in the explosion when the time bomb goes off. Whenever that is, and what a throw from Cactus, or from Terry Funk, excuse me, throwing the board all the way to the floor and connecting on Cactus Jack. Pounding away on the head of Terry Funk. Both men on the floor now. Whatever Cactus Jack can get his hands on, he's putting to use here against Terry Funk. I think that was some rolled up barbed wire that they used to set the ring up for this matchup. Just lays the board on top of Terry Funk and another elbow drop from Cactus Jack. And the weight of Cactus Jack breaks that barbed wire board. Cactus Jack pulls it off of Terry Funk. And Cactus Jack now, out of nowhere, in control of this matchup. You see that ominous black box right next to them as over the barricade and into the crowd goes Cactus Jack. That black box right up against the ring is one of the explosives, the time bomb deathmatch portion of your main event here. 
the finals of the King of the Death Matches tournament, which will explode before the end of this one. And let's give some credit to these IWA Japan fans that have paid their hard-earned money to sit ringside. We've had so much action spill into the crowd. It's been really, a toe hold. Really gotta give these fans credit for the bravery of putting themselves in harm's way as the Funkster twisting away at the knee of Cactus Jack. Will Cactus Jack give it up? He's trying to punch his way out of it. Oh, but here comes Tiger Jeet Singh underneath the barbed wire and landing a shot in on Terry Funk. Tiger Jeet Singh now doing a number on Terry Funk. Referee trying to tell him to stop attacking Funk, but there's not much the referee can do. And what is Tiger Jeet Singh doing here? We're supposed to have the finals between Cactus Jack and Terry Funk, and Tiger Jeet Singh has no business being in the ring during this matchup. Well, we saw Cactus Jack try to help. Oh, just chest and face first into the explosion, and the barbed wire goes Terry Funk. Well, we saw earlier in the tournament, Tiger Jeet Singh and Cactus Jack trying to help one another. We're seeing it again here in the finals. Cover! Only two! Funk gets his shoulder up. Spinning neck breaker, not enough to put away Terry Funk. Double arm DDT! Drop the Funkster right on top of his head. Again, he gets his shoulder up. We hear the ring announcer counting down the time bomb. And there's the explosion. Thankfully for Cactus Jack, he's all the way out on the floor. And Terry Funk, thankfully in the center of the ring, neither man suffered the brunt of the explosion as they were not toward the edge of the ring or right over the exploding bombs. Terry Funk and Cactus Jack catch a break there. As you said, Terry Funk in the center and Cactus Jack, he didn't know where the explosion was gonna be, so he just ran away. Very safe decision on Cactus's part. As another explosion as Cactus Jack just dumped on the barbed wire board. The bandage is coming off of his arm. Cactus Jack somehow able to crawl after taking that backdrop suplex onto the exploding board. But Cactus unable to get to his feet, rolls to the outside, now he's up. Not quite sure if he knows where he is though. Well that blood is going right into his eyes, just covering the face of Cactus Jack and Terry Funk looking at his own hands that have been shredded thanks to this barbed wire. It's unbelievable the type of punishment that these two men are putting their own bodies through for the sake of bragging rights to be able to call themselves the king of the death matches. Now a ladder in the ring. No, don't do it. Head first. The ladder goes it right into Terry Funk's head, and Terry Funk could be knocked out here. And suplexing the ladder on top of Funk. Blood all over the ladder. Funk is down on his back, covered by Cactus. How did Funk kick out? Cactus Jack setting up the ladder. He's already hit Terry Funk in the head with it. He's already suplexed the ladder onto Terry Funk's legs. And now Cactus Jack is climbing up the ladder. Terry Funk could be out. Who even knows if he can stand after having that ladder fall on his knees? You know, you've heard the, the phrase, the crimson mask. Now is about as fitting as ever just covered in blood, cover. He gets his shoulder up once again. The elbow drop off the ladder from Cactus Jack, but he can't put Terry Funk away. Elbow drop from the heavens from Cactus Jack off the ladder, and he's going back up. I don't know how Terry Funk kicked out after that elbow drop. And that ladder not too sturdy at this point. And Terry Funk knocks the ladder over and sends Cactus into the barbed wire. And Cactus Jack at this point has lost so much blood 
I don't know if he's gonna be able to continue. And the same can be said for Terry Funk. And Cactus Jack now goes for a cover. And that is three. We have the winner of the King of the Death Matches Tournament in Cactus Jack. It is unbelievable just what kind of punishment these two wrestlers were able to endure through three matches in the course of one day's time, putting their bodies on the line, letting their opponents shred their flesh on barbed wire, broken glass, utilizing tables, chairs, ladders, explosions, you name it. Look at the face of Cactus Jack, the pool of blood on the canvas. And he is your winner, your king of the death matches, Cactus Jack. For Jared David, I'm Dave Prezak. We thank you for joining us on the World Wrestling Network and Big Vision Entertainment's home video release of the king of the death matches.
was a feeling deep in my stomach because I was happy in the United States. I was happy there until Terry Funk signed with IWA. Terry Funk signed with IWA. The Japanese press has called me the American Onita for the past five years, and that's great. But when Terry Funk came to the IWA, I didn't see a chance to make money. I saw a chance to finally sleep at night. Because the name Terry Funk is in the way in my guts for the last three years, because no matter how good I was, no matter how dangerous I was, Tiger, that's right. I knew in my heart. I've never beaten Terry Funk. And in my heart, I didn't know if I could. It was a quest. And now, with my potty batter, at least maybe I can find peace, Tiger. Because I've beaten Terry Funk. I've beaten Terry Funk. Maybe many, many more times, you know. This is not the only one, you know. There will be many, many more times. King of the death patch. I don't feel like a king. I felt like shaking Terry Funk's hand. He walked up to me. He was hurt. Well, so am I, Terry!